Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call this meeting to order of the City of Montpelier Development Review Board for our normal scheduled meeting on Monday, November 19th, 2018. My name is Dan Richardson. I serve as the chair. The other members from my right are Rob Goodwin, Kevin O'Connell, Deb Markowitz, Meredith Crandall, staff, Kate McCarthy, Tom Kester, Ryan Kane, Claire Rock. Okay. The first item of business is approval of the agenda. Does anybody have an addition to the agenda or a motion to approve the agenda as printed? So moved. Motion by Kevin. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Kate. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of the agenda as printed, please raise your right hand. We have our agenda. There are no comments from the chair tonight. The next item of business is approval of the minutes from September 17th in attendance for myself, Kate, Brian, uh, Rob, and just the four of us. Do I have a uh, motion for the September 17th minutes from the members that were present and eligible to vote? We yeah, move to approve the September 17th minutes as drafted. Okay, motion by Ryan. Second that. Second by Rob. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the September 17th minutes that are eligible to vote, please raise your right hand. We have September 17th minutes officially on the books. Next uh, set of minutes is from November 5th, 2018. In attendance were Kevin, Tom, Ryan, Rob, Deb, and Claire. Do I have a motion for those minutes or amendments to make? I have amendments. Uh Okay. Chair, I, I wish to uh, just to reflect that uh, yourself and Kate McCarthy were not there at the meeting. Uh, as it states in the comments from the chair, as Dan has recused himself, I just put for the record that you, the both of you, were not at that meeting and had made known to the board as well as to Meredith that you would not be there. Okay, just add in a not friend of mine. Correct, yes. Yep. Um, as well as. Uh, I guess the characterization of some of the testimony that was given by the engineers at the, at the meeting, I believe that that the, the, this is a, you know a, a paraphrasing a synopsis so that it I don't want to come out into the molehills, but um, when you have engineers who put their you know their license on the line, I just want to make sure that we don't uh, put things say things that are not there, um, such as on the second page where it says Lynn and Marshall then detailed detailed why their professional why their professional opinions are about something being when um, as I recall from the meeting they were perhaps more nuanced and such but I don't know if that's a correction but just rather that that be known that uh, their testimony perhaps was not as exacting and, and that the uh, recording and such can can more uh, uh, specifically articulate what their opinions were but I think just just to make that known um, in, in lieu of detailed, is there s some other uh, <clears throat> verb such as stated or I think you know, detailed. I don't know if I would agree with that, and um, I, I believe they were asked to give their uh, their professional opinions. I don't know if, if they were. If okay, that so was exactly what they what they said. They did. They came back. So that was my question to them, and um, and there were remember, there was the the two as I recall. There were two different engineers, and the first engineer yeah. gave an imprecise answer. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so then the second engineer was asked, and he gave a very precise answer. Then we went back to the first engineer who agreed with that precise answer. So we that to, so he made a more nuanced uh, explanation of what makes a river channelized. Yes. And then I asked again, well, you know, in yeah. you know, did you have a conversation, you know, and. And they both, in their professional judgment, uh, said that, that, that the river was channelized. I guess if the record can reflect that, can reflect that sort of procedure that, I, as I had it, the, 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 the engineer from uh, DNK said that it was channelized to some degree. Uh, and then the, the second engineer came in, and then the engineer from DNK then talked, you know, agreed with that, as long as the record can reflect in our minutes to that, to that effect. I think that what we need to have reflected is there's, so the first engineer talked about channel it, what it, you know, whether it's channelized, um, using the term as a term of art, 
And, uh, but then the question came back to, is it channelized for the purpose of the regulation? Mm -hmm. And so that's what they then answer to, that for the purpose of the regulation, mm -hmm. it is considered channelized. And that's because of the his because it's channelized on the other side and blah, blah, blah. You know, they gave mm -hmm. the, yeah. the whole song in there. So maybe that's the nuance. I, I agree with Deb. As, as long as the record, yeah, I, I would have the record reflect it as, uh, as Deb was recounting that. Does other people, do other people remember it in the same way? No, I do. Yeah, yes. it's, this was my trying to fill in in as few words as possible when yeah, the person who actually did the minutes completely had it wrong. So um, <laughs> I think we, I can add it that in. Do you guys want to see that again? This, do, you want me to see, do you want to see the redraft? I think as long as it's understood that sort of the, the way that Deb is characterizing it, mm -hmm. that um, you know, the, 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 the engineer from Du Bois and King gave his presentation, that it was a little bit more nuanced. I think it was to some degree. And then the other engineer came up, and then uh, the engineer from Du Bois and King then reiterated that his agreement with the opinion of the second engineer mm -hmm. as to the channelization of the river. Okay. I think it's important in any time in minutes, and I, I think those corrections are uh, very good to, if they reflect the accurate back and forth. Yeah. Um, you know, we've historically gone back and forth between how detailed do the minutes have to be. You know, we had at one point. Uh, <coughs> almost verbatim transcriptions, and the, that got to be a bit lengthy and didn't serve the purpose, which is essentially just to summarize the exchanges that take place and to give a sort of official, this is what we talked about generally, as opposed to something being held. That said, you know, we, it should always be accurate, and it sounds like this, this particular section needed a little bit extra clarification. Anything else? Yes, I, I think that um, uh, the call to order, the meeting was called to order by me, but it should say Kevin O'Connell acting chair. Yep. Anything else? Uh, let me suggest then that I think People seemed comfortable with the sort of amendments that <coughs> Meredith would add to the minutes to flesh out Tom's concerns. That if we make those three changes, which is um, add acting chair to the meeting was called to order by Kevin O'Connell, acting chair. Acting vice chair. Act, acting. No, I think it's when he's sitting there, he's acting yeah. chair. I'm acting chair. Uh, according to the procedural rules, oh. it's acting vice chair. I second that. Which is why it says yeah. acting vice chair further down. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, then a line that says, you know, that uh, recognizes that Kate and I were not present, mm -hmm. and then, um, and then uh, a beefing up according to, to Tom's comments and, and Deb's comments as to the testimony regarding channelization. Yep. So if those changes are made, is there a motion to accept those? The minutes with those amendments? So moved. Motion by Tom. Do I have a second? Second that. Second by Rob. All those eligible to any further discussion? Hearing none, all those eligible to vote on the November 5th minutes, that would be Kevin, Tom, Ryan, Rob, Deb, and Claire. Please raise your right hand. Minutes are approved as amended. And on to the central business of tonight. Let's start with uh, One Home Farmway, Connor Brother Applicants. <clears throat> Good, evening. Good evening. If you would state your names for the record, please. Uh, just to introduce uh, the reason why we're back yet again, uh, we are in negotiations with a prospective tenant. Oh, sorry, Fred. Could you just state your names for the record? And then I'll. Connor. And uh, Jeff Olasky with Lewis Consulting Engineers. Okay, so let's put you guys under oath, and then I'll let you go into the introduction. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Very good. So, Fred, please. Sorry. Um, no, no problem. So we're back, we're back again tonight at the request of a prospective tenant uh, to add square footage uh, to the building uh, in the form of a minor addition uh, which will still make us uh, smaller than we original, originally came to the board uh, for. Um, and we're uh, 
respectfully requesting approval of that uh, amendment tonight, and I'm glad to ask Jeff to outline what the what the requested addition involves. Sure. Um, so just to turn over the attention to sheet 2.0, uh, revised proposed condition type plan that was uh, made the application. Actually, while well, thinking about it, um, there was some minor amendments per staff comment from the area uh, that we were able to address prior to the meeting tonight. So just want to formally submit those as uh, supplemental information. Uh, I think the plan allowed is consistent with what's in front of everybody there. There was just some more of clerical errors regarding the zoning regulations and whatnot um, that we amended. So uh, to clarify, uh, you know, we obviously permitted in the past a uh, new uh, building addition on the rear portion of one home farmway here and some additional parking and site improvements. Um, those were under construction substantially complete at this point. Um, there's some still some little cleanup work to do in the spring, but uh, uh, the building is uh, shell is, is constructed in place. And for those of you who were part of this board in the past, we've, the, the sites, we've had a couple permitting processes with this uh, property building, and ultimately got two building footprints, I'll say, for lack of a better term, kind of permitted through the board at, at two different points. Um, one was, if you look at the plan, you'll see this larger dashed line um, and that goes around the, the building addition here. That was the original largest size building footprint that we got approved initially with this project. Um, and in total, it was a little over 16,000 square feet in size. As part of the revised scope and re-permitting of this property, uh, we ultimately scaled uh, the building size down to the 12,722 square foot it's kind of shown as existing right now, which is just a kind of same same shape, but just scaled down a little bit. And that was what was ultimately permitted and constructed, um, currently constructed our property right now. Um, what we're currently looking for, um, as, as Fred alluded to, is a, a potential building addition to that footprint based on a prospective tenant for the, the building. They need a little more space for, a, I think it's a cooler or a storage area of some sorts. And it represents this kind of dark shaded box that you see here. Um, that's a little over 3,000 square foot uh, addition to the currently built structure. Um, I think what, what Fred was alluding to is if you combine the, the, the constructed building footprint and this addition that we're proposing, that total square footage is still less than the overall original building size and scope. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the layout and function of everything else is, is still the exact same. We're just looking for this building addition. Um, we are you know, significantly close to both the uh, side setback and floodplain limit on the, I'll call it, southeast corner of that building, and, and certainly we've taken care and made some notes on both the site and grading plans to account for that. Um, but uh, beyond that, I think the building addition complies with all the zoning regulations. Um, as far as the clarification, the plans that were just submitted, um, understanding that some zoning regulations have changed from when this project was originally permitted, uh, we had updated the zoning requirements under the new regs and, uh, and updated this, you know, the building setbacks and whatnot, but because ultimately, based on our conversations with staff and Meredith, that this is an amendment to the previously approved site plan, we're actually still falling under the previous zoning regulations, so we just put those back to the, to the original uh, setbacks and updated this to clarify the 2011 uh, zoning regulations that were essentially being uh, reviewed under. So. Um, I think that was the gist of, of the changes. Um, I can clarify one other thing, or I want to discuss one other topic. Um, Marriott had highlighted a couple of additional things that I think she wanted us to be prepared to discuss tonight. Um, one was uh, the addition of one additional parking space um, during construction out there. And, and I believe, I'm, I'm correct in saying, I, I believe it's this one parking space uh, right here on this, this uh, parking area here was part of the original approved uh, site plan. And we had relocated uh, this dumpster patch enclosure, fence enclosure had been relocated a couple times as part of this relayout. And when it was ultimately positioned here, uh, apparently during construction, um, the, our plan showed a, a little three or four foot green strip between that, that uh, pad and the paved parking area. And when they were ultimately decided to construct and, and put this parking area in place, uh, they decided to just pave all the way to the, the concrete pad and, and add one more parking space there. Um, I think it a little bit was just a constructability standpoint. Um, I will say from a practicality standpoint, having a small you know, uh, green strip between uh, the fenced-in enclosure and the parking 
may not have really provided a whole lot of, of opportunity for that vegetation to stay or, or, or be maintained. So I think it was just a, a practical implementation on the, on the contractor's part. Um, I will also point out that even with the inclusion of that parking space, we still fall under the total impervious area that was originally permitted <coughs> on the site. Um, so that's a little bit of explanation on how that transpired. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the one comment I believe is she requested copies of our state, both stormwater construction and discharge permits. Uh, we did supply copies, those were obtained. Um, the construction permit has lapsed, which is site stabilized right now. So ultimately, if we're we move forward with this building addition, we'll probably just renew that construction general permit um, when we get out there to construct. And um, ultimately, if this is approved tonight, we also will be just simply filing an amended site plan for with our state discharge permit to see if there's any changes needed on that point. It's certainly something we'll follow through with regardless. Um, we don't see any issues, again, mainly because the overall impervious area uh, was reduced, understanding that we also permitted with the state the larger building footprint originally as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a summary. I'm happy to turn over to the board for any questions. Just, just one initial question. The, the blackened area is the dimensions of the proposed addition? Correct, yes. And I also see on the plan that I'm holding that it has existing concrete pad to be removed, pointing to the same area. Is it, is it the same area or is it a, a subset of that? Yeah, it may, it may be hard to see underneath, but there, okay. they, there's essentially a, a, an exit door on the back of this existing building. Mm -hmm. And so we had a five by five concrete pad. Okay, just, it's, a small, it's a small. Yeah, it's a small little box. And obviously we're infilling that with buildings. Yeah, so sure, no, I understood. <laughs> I just want to, so you made an earlier point about the setback and the, uh, the, the flood zone. Um, this building bumps right up against those boundaries. Is that right? Correct, yeah. Um, and then these are the old boundaries under the pre-2018 zoning bylaws. Correct. Uh, well, the, the ones that you see in your handout yeah. are the current 2018 boundaries the for the setbacks for the setbacks the but the only setbacks that are the only setbacks that are changed by going back to the 2011 setbacks are the rear and the front okay so the, the rear setback is actually under the old 2011 regs is actually 20 feet the front setback is 50 feet but we're not having any changes within those issues. Right. It was so it no was more of a record keeping, making sure that the final plat has the correct setbacks on it. Right. Okay. So it it it, it doesn't really impact. No, the size setback didn't change under either scenario, which is the one in essentially that we're uh, uh, you know abiding. So on this building, this this addition, would there be any access from the rear, or is this? Essentially, the end of the building would be non-accessible. I don't believe so. Uh, uh, possibly a, a pedestrian access in the event of an emergency, a fire, but not. Uh, there's going to be no paving or any sidewalks or anything out there. Okay. Um, and then uh, this won't. Was this? Were there, were there any plantings or um, vegetation? scheduled for this area or not no. um, when you say there's a pedestrian access I'm looking at this this drawing and almost well, it's hard to tell because this, this these may be elevation lines would that be on the side if I'm if I'm standing on the property next door and I'm looking at the at the new addition would the pedestrian access be on the side or would it be right facing me it's a, it's going to be a sprinkler building. It is a sprinkler building with a fire alarm system. So I'm just talking about a five by five pad for exiting the building in the event of an emergency. Not oh, okay. Not, any, not anything. Not a dramatic. No. Okay. Probably something similar to that five by five pad that we're removing. Okay. It's just an emergency exit requirement. This is a one story building, correct? I believe so. Yes. The new addition part, anyway. As I recall, previously we had a discussion uh, last month about a uh, backup generator. Um, mm -hmm. Is that in this area? It, um, uh, it's shown on the, it was shown on the plan, essentially okay. uh, just to the southwest side of the, the loading dock area here. Okay. So that, that pad there is would be location. Okay. That hasn't changed at all? That has not changed. So really it's just this, 
building addition <coughs> and the one parking space. What about this drainage? There's a, on the kind of existing plan, there's a drainage swale that goes from kind of one side of the proposed addition through the proposed addition and out. Like, how is this going to affect drainage? But what about from water from like the north uh, east of the proposed addition? Like in, this yeah. Here? Yep. Uh, essentially, this would just sheet flow. Right now, there's kind of a three or four foot bank. Um, we've essentially allocated a, amounts to about a, a 15 to 20 foot buffer strip of this, this area here that would sheet flow across grass and then just be like into the surrounding flood. And the parking area drains to where? Uh, the, the parking area associated with the new building or? Or just kind of, I'm, I'm especially the parking area to the kind of yeah, north. So of, the, yeah. The parking area here generally drains to a catch basin located in the middle of it, as it kind of always has. Um, when we were permitting this uh, stormwater discharge uh, permit with the state, um, ultimately we did a little bit of a uh, site balancing and disconnect exercise with them. And so ultimately, we treated the existing building, uh, proposed building, and this, all this uh, parking area here through the inflammation of these two grass swales here and some uh, retention at the end. And the two catch basins and drainage that collect all this existing uh, parking here just, just discharges directly out to the river as it always currently has. So we kind of had Okay, so there's that, that that amount of water that's now just going to sheet to the east, I guess, from that little bit of area that's now disconnected from that drainage swale. Yeah, exactly. It's just so, that area that would be move the water would be going. Yeah, the buildings all still be accounted for. It essentially just be, you know, it will essentially be treating through disconnect this pave strip, which is a access a loading dock essentially. We just put a small two percent cross slope on it, and then we essentially equal the same width with just flat grass area as a, as a simple disconnection for that. So that would be that treatment process. And then the building in this parking lot all gets treated through the grass swales around the perimeter here. Any other questions? Um, will this require a change uh, to any of your state permits? Uh, the only one would be potentially be the state stormwater discharge permit. And again, we. We th we're thinking it's more or less of an administrative process just based on understanding again we're reducing the amount of impervious area and obviously changing some of the drainage patterns slightly um but we'll ultimately have that conversation with a and r but okay. we didn't want to go down that road until we knew we had the changes here along, so yeah okay so we may just condition whether we'll leave it i'm just having that filed yep yep, yep. And that's what uh department of public works asked for would would be a condition that require them to file their updated state stormwater permit with the city? Yep. And you have no problem with that? As or do long you? as we could just say that if one is required. Because the, oh. the, the state may simply say that it's not a substantial change and that, you know, their the existing state permit is valid still. Potentially, I, I don't know. A state would avoid an opportunity to <laughs> issue yes. I didn't say avoid. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, okay, so obviously if there's no amendment, there's nothing to be filed and it's a nullity. Um, any other questions or concerns from the board? I mean, this, this is a pretty minor amendment and straightforward, it seems like. Um, Does this have any effect on the landscape plan that you had previously? Not, no, all the landscaping that was previously proposed go in. The, the focus mainly on that was around the, the larger proposed parking lot and the river buffer corridor here, right. as well as some out front. Yep. So mm -hmm. there was nothing ever planned out the back. And if, if, if my recollection is 
correct, the abutting landowner behind the building that's forested area right now, or at least has some vegetation? Some, yeah. Um, you need to make a note about that property. Than I it's do. I mean, it's pretty much an open field uh, to the rear of our property boundary. There are right. some trees to the, to the left. But I'm thinking to the east here. Yeah, um, there are some trees on the like, southeast side of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. If any member of the board wishes to make a motion. Mr. Chair, I will move that the board approve the site plan amendment uh, at one home farm way. We, I can do? we accept a friendly amendment to add the condition that if a stormwater permit update is required, such will be filed with the uh, city. I accept that friendly amendment. Thank you. And I'll accept that in a second. Excellent. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I would also uh, add that all conditions of the previous approval remain in full force and effect as well. Right. Because um, that would impact the expiration date versus issuing a brand new permit. Oh, right. That's why those conditions are on yep. the end of the staff report. Yep. Well, that's. Will the moving parties uh, accept that friendly amendment, the second friendly amendment as well? Yes, thank you. All right. Hearing that, any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. You have your permit. Pretty good. In 30 Thank days. Thank you all very much. And happy Thanksgiving. Yes. You, you too. Very much. Same to you. Thank you very much. Okay, so three with amendments and four. Awesome. Next item of business is sketch plan review for National Life Insurance Company, 155 Northfield Street. Hi. Hi there. Good evening. Uh, if you'll state your name for the record. No. Uh, Chris Drenkoff with Chase and Chase Surveyors. Hi, Chris. Um, so just to explain our process on sketch plan review, when we do a subdivision, this is the first uh, step. We won't put you under oath. This is mainly an opportunity for us to uh, proverbially per to kick the tires of the application yeah, and uh, to ask questions and to see what needs to be fleshed out or uh, what issues we may have for you to make a determination. So it's an informal process. Uh, it used to result in us making a vote as to whether we would combine uh, a certain process down the road, but in this case it does not. It's just simply an opportunity for you to hear and the necessary first step. So what I'll have you do is uh, walk us through the proposed application uh, as well as any issues that you foresee uh, and ways that you've addressed them. Or yours. So National Life would like to subdivide. I believe you have it in your package. Um, uh, essentially, two-acre parcel surrounding the. Microphone. Happens all the time. Okay, thanks. Uh, them all? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so they'd like to subdivide a. Uh, a parcel of land around the uh, the existing uh, preschool uh, that has been operated by the Orchard Valley School on the property <coughs> um, to enable them to uh, convey the convey the land fee simple to the to the operators of the school. Um, the, the the school as well as a solar solar farm and the community garden occupy approximately uh, 18 acres. Uh, of land owned by National Life that is held as a standalone fee simple parcel. Um, the property was acquired in 68, has never been merged with the adjoining lands of National Life. <coughs> yeah, folks have to bear with me. I've had a cold for a week okay. here. Um, um, there's been never been any uh, um, action on the part of National Life to merge those parcels. Uh, the listers have are combined them as the term they use for the taxation purposes, but it is a standalone parcel that National Life could choose to sell in its entirety at this at any point in time without coming to you folks for any kind of an approval. Um, so it's that parcel that we have focused on. It's that parcel that we have um, treated as the parent parcel of the tract and with the remaining, uh, the lot two with a solar farm and the community garden being the 15.8 acres 
reflected uh, on the overall parcel map inset. Um, there are no changes proposed to the operation of the of the the school whatsoever. Um, it's currently permitted for 24 students and four staff through the state wastewater permit process. Um, there is one late addition that I was unaware of. Um, it was a result of a question I posed after the application was filed with National Life. There is a one-bedroom apartment uh, in the building as well. Um, and it's not well clear, well spelled out in the state wastewater permit. Um, it refers to the conversion of one unit of a duplex for the school purposes. Doesn't really address the existing, the existing uh, at the time and continues uh, existing apartment. Uh, but once you look more closely at the actual flows that were permitted, it's clear that it does include the apartment. So, um, so that is there, and that was not, I don't believe, reflected on the sketch plan application. Um, and that will continue. That would the intent would be to continue that use as well. Um, the couple of questions that we had going through the process and preparing what you see in front of you were were one. <clears throat> getting the board's blessing on not having to survey the entirety of the balance of that piece. <clears throat> it was surveyed um, in 1957, pr just prior to National Ice acquiring the property. Uh, that survey is on record. And uh, again, it's it's a considerably more work and more expense to national life if we have to survey the whole thing. If the board feels it's necessary, certainly that, that would, is what we'll have to do. Um, but we'd like to at least make the pitch that it that um, we've, we've done what you see in front of you is, is what would be necessary to get to garner your blessing. Well, you haven't surveyed. Have you done any reconnoitering to see if any of the pins are still there? Um, well, we've surveyed the lines immediately adjacent to the parcel we're creating, the two and a half acres, and some out beyond it to, to, to verify that the, the lots, I mean, we've tied in, we've, we, we, we have met our, our statutory obligations as surveyors relative to the two acre parcel we, that, that is being subdivided. Okay, so the, the actual two acre parcel, you've done the, the survey to create those lines. You've also confirmed, for example, the Grenier and the Tosi. Oh, Lots. absolutely. Yeah, the research back to the original grand tours mm -hmm. in the, in the uh, yeah this early 1800s. The the staff comment there came from the Department of Public Works, who is pretty uh, vehement about trying to make sure both lots in a subdivision have been surveyed. But it's also I think because there were no notes on here confirming that the larger parcel had been surveyed previously, and that might be one reason he he brought that up. Maybe it's right. just a question of, I mean, is it, I, I don't know if the standard is to, would be to potentially reference that older survey for lot two in a note on here, or not? Well, the survey is noted as reference number one on the plan, but it's not necessarily. Um, oh, the one from 1957. Yes. Okay. Sorry, yeah. I thought you said 67 earlier. No, so. I may, maybe I did. Okay. Maybe I did. Then, yeah. Then I think it's all here. Yeah. yeah. So I think that was just Tom being extra vigilant. Mm -hmm. So we know. have, oh, excuse me. I, I don't know if that's being extra vigilant or just being practical. Yeah, making sure that everything's surveyed. Right. Yep. I mean, and that's I just because I, I this is here. I can understand that it's not an issue now because National Life is still going to retain ownership of the two mm -hmm. parcels. But down the road, you know, who knows? Twenty, thirty years. But you can rest on the earlier survey. Well, that then that was my thought is that we can probably rest here on the 1957 survey. Right? So, I think he just didn't realize that that's what it was. The 1957 survey was of the whole lot, one and two together. So if there hadn't been an earlier survey, certainly we would have already But having had an early survey. Well, I don't, it, you know, the. I mean, the, the comment that Tom makes is really geared towards making sure that both lots comply and conform with, so we don't create a non-conforming mm -hmm. lot. And I think 
I, I think that Meredith is right as far as the 1957 survey. If it's there, should satisfy, you know, with some degree of professional confidence that lot two either equals or exceeds the 15.8 acres. I mean, I think, would think from National Life's point of view, they just want to be sure that these were separately held parcels um, only because I, is this in a rural district? Uh, no, <clears throat> it's in the gateway, the gateway. western gateway. Um, that can obviously have subdivision ramifications down the road if there's any. Oh yeah, no, I mean it, certainly if there's more, if there's more intensive work to be done, um, and had there be, if we were if we were bouncing around any kind of regulatory thresholds relative mm -hmm. to the remainder parcel, that would have been part and parcel of what we have undertaken to do in the very beginning. I mean, I'm just looking at the overall parcel map where you have the boundaries drawn out for a lot too. I mean, that's just based off of the 57 survey? Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm personally not, don't feel that there's necessarily the strong reason to have to redo the 57 survey work um, for this subdivision when by all evidence the remaining 15.8 acre is going to be more than sufficient size lot it has frontage um, you know all the all the normal issues that we address here and in fact that Tom highlights is a reason for outlining uh, at least in this case, don't seem to be triggered. But that's one board members. No, I'm, I'm satisfied by that. I, I wanted to just make sure we had the adequate discussion. Has the 18-foot uh, wide uh, easement, has that been defined in terms of responsibility for the easement between the two lots? Not at this point. That's something the board really, if they want you want as folks want to see that, um, as because the remaining lot two has adequate frontage, has alternative <coughs> access. It's not something that popped right up on our radar out of the gate. Um, certainly, it's going to have to be as part of the transaction. Those, I mean, of necessity, the the the, the attorneys are going to have to work that out and agree upon it right. between the two parties. Mm -hmm. um, if the board wants to see that language ahead of time, absolutely, we'll, we'll, we'll have that, put that together. As a condition of, of, of for the uh, permit, would you be amenable to having uh, the condition be that you record with the the town administ or the zoning administrator, you know, the uh, conditions of the easement as well as the location of it in terms of like a meets and bounds? Yes, yeah, certainly we can add. It is it's curve and tangent math on the easement as I as I've depicted it. It's easy enough to put those annotations on it at sketch plan. All right. Uh, and and the eighteen foot width is dictated by the the available space between the buildings. So there's no that's the only science to that. I was gonna say this is an existing farm lane. Yeah, it actually goes up to the it serves the it's the prime to the primary entrance to the solar farm actually. I mean that that I see that as an important easement to establish because of that because it is the entrance to solar oh, yeah. farm. Oh yeah, yeah, it will you definitely, know. like I said, it will be part of the transaction. Um. Um, and then uh, one of the notes is that the uh, fifty foot water setback on either side of the stream. I know that there is a a stream to the east of the building yep there's an intermittent stream that runs down through a significant gully uh, down through there we didn't map any we mapped the stream stream the threat of the stream mm -hmm. um, as a matter of normal course we did not map necessarily some of the other topographic features that might define the limits of of any setbacks top of bank etc which would to make it meaningful would be necessary to do. Right. Um, as we are not proposing any development, we didn't believe it to be necessary as a, as a first course. 
uh, to do that. Certainly, any application that came came back in front of the board that proposed, uh, you know, proposed development would would uh, would necessitate those those features being mapped more thoroughly. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I hate to, I hate to just throw buffers based on just a thread of stream and people seem to think that's something that's meaningful and down the road not have it meaningful I'd rather have less information if it's not going to be completely accurate and correct I would not like to include it on the map and it's going to take some significant work to map those top of bank features in order to get the appropriate buffers on mm -hmm. um, but again Um, well, I, th I think the purpose of that, and I think we do require some illustration of the setbacks, um, in part to illustrate the building envelope potential. Um, okay. while I understand this is somewhat different as opposed to say, taking a piece of raw land and subdividing it off with the idea that anything could be built there and you create the building envelope this has existing uh, structures on it and really an established use but I mean I don't know what the the school's plans are for the facility if they're planning on expanding or even what successive owners will be doing I think it's important for us in our subdivision review to be able to identify that you know is this a parcel that has reached its building capacity um, on this site or are there other sort of building envelopes that helps us identify and understand you know the nature of this parcel yeah. but mr. chair I agree with you and I would just note that in this district the lot size is a 20,000 square foot minimum lot size so the creation of the two acre lot for now uh, it could be subdivided into additional lots later, um, at which point it would be very important to know what's where. Um, so, uh, absolutely, echoing. Absolutely. And uh, I guess yeah. my only pushback would, would uh, I don't disagree with you that in the future that those, those elements are going to be a necessary element. Mm -hmm. uh, for the purposes of this application, I'd, I, would, I would suggest that they're not. Um, but that's, you know, this is, this is your ballywick, not mine. Right, right. I guess, uh, Rob. Uh, my question is: Is um, publicly available uh, lidar data from the you know, the contours? Would that effectively show the um, width of the stream? You could show an approximate setback based off that, or is that something? Yeah, that maybe it might. It okay. might. It depends. I mean, that we've we've been actually using that the available one foot uh, from the VCGI okay. the lidar stuff a lot lately. Some areas it's really good. Some areas is not so hot. Um, mm. um, but certainly we could get something on there. Um, we we could take that approach. Um, um, I, you know, I'm I'm not sure if the if in the future the lidar data turns out not to be so good <laughs> that that we haven't just gone through the exercise without it really being a regulatory boundary that, that may be applicable in the field, I guess is my only, my only reluctance based on the, what I've seen in the data. You just don't know until you try it. One area would be great. I mean, lay right on the actual field generated topography and then all of a sudden fall off a cliff and have a six or eight foot vertical discrepancy. But right. um, would, would a... <clears throat> As as a matter of notice, um, of showing some showing some buffers based on the stream center line with a with a with a note putting future individuals on notice that there's something to be looked at more closely here. Would yeah. that would I'm, that? I mean, I can yeah. qualify a note such that it it doesn't. Well, that's actually where I was. It's clear that the, what's shown on the plan is not necessarily a regulatory boundary, but right. there's something else and, out there. And, and that's actually where I was headed with my next question and comment, because I think that that's really what we're getting at, is an issue of notice and an issue of um, m marking this, even if it's not into the level of detail um, that would 
successive developments would require at least giving people, you know, some notice of this. Um, it also helps, I think it helps us as a board visually to see sure. that. Uh, I mean, I'm familiar with this area having sent two kids through that school. Oh. <laughs> um, so having, having hiked and played the Muffin Man on the hillside there, I, I, um, I know that there is that stream and gully, um, and I think it's important to, to at least demarcate to a certain extent to understand. Um, so I, th I, I think we're amenable to that, that type of, you know, not requiring you to go into extensive mapping and surveying uh, for something that really isn't going to be touched at this point in time or have plans to be touched in the near future. Um, but it also helps us too and understand. And I, I think ultimately the school, both National Life and the, the grantee, it benefits them because they know what they're getting precisely so that there's no confusion that they're not receiving something such as the parcel. I mean, presumably they'll be familiar with it, but if there were plans for future development, yeah. having that having that there I think protects National Life, but it also, you know, puts the Orchard Valley people on notice that hmm, this is uh, a, going to be a difficult area. This will remain essentially what it is yep. for the future. Um, so I think that's helpful, um, and I think that seems to be amenable. Were there any other questions from the board? Claire? Yeah, I had a, a question about the, um, the field drive, and is that the principal access to the community garden? And I was just curious on kind of where the parking is for the community garden and kind of where does that field drive go? It is the access for the community garden, and it's not very well defined. <coughs> the parking is not what it would call developed. Okay. Means. Um, it's the people park essentially in the, in the uh, Moan Hayfield. Um, uh, and it's just, uh, just around the north side of the garden there. From, from above, it looks as if the field drive from the picture it's included in our packet, which appears to be from sort of a Google Earth yeah. snapshot, looks as if the field drive Continuous. goes past the community gardens up along. Oh, yeah, towards yeah the back gets, of and the it includes access to the balance of the, you know, the, the, the open fields. Mm -hmm. I had a, a, an additional question about this setback to the solar farm. Um, and is that a, this new boundary line won't impact the PUC's approved setback for the solar farm? PUC. The Public Utility Commission? Oh, yeah. Um, um, that is a question. I have actually landed that in the laps of the attorneys at, at National Life to get answers to however this subdivision we're proposing relates to that approval. And I haven't got any answers yet. So I don't have an answer for you on that. Um, that really is in their laps at this point. Um, the, initial, the initial response was that I shouldn't have any difference, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Well, I, I mean, I think it does have a difference only because in that corner, you know, if there is a requirement for additional setback, that would be something that would have to be a burden on lot one, no development right. to a certain point, which it could, it could be, or there could be a boundary line adjustment yeah. with that. Um, but obviously, yeah, but you know, and actually, I was, at, at, I had expected to have an answer to that by now, and it's something that kind of slipped off my radar. Any further questions? I had a, a, a question about use, because I'm guessing that this lot is currently permitted as the child care school as the principal use. And so I was curious about, with lot two, what would be the identified principal use of lot two once that's been subdivided? Mm, well, I mean, in this case, it's not it's not like there was one principal use, it was just three shared uses. Okay. Um, and so, what did I say in here? Um, you know, utility structures and agricultural uses, they're all permitted in the Western Gateway. So, 
the second lot would be a shared use between agricultural and basically utility for the solar mm -hmm. farm. Neither of which the city regulates. Right, neither closely. of them are conditional. Mm. Yeah, oh, well, that and also, yeah, agricultural and utility, we don't have a lot of say in those. I'm not sure if that community garden would actually meet the, the definition of um, um, agricultural property, use. Though. Right, but on, this other, on the other one. I was just curious on what you consider a community, community garden. <laughs> Oh, sure. is, it, is it considered like a community center? No, I mean, agriculture is fairly broadly defined. Um, and so... I don't know if it's that broadly defined. Hmm. It's pretty broadly defined. It is pretty broadly defined. Well, I mean, if for, for that to be, for, uh, for an, a bona fide agricultural use to be exempted from local zoning, there's some specific definitions it would have to meet, and well, I don't uh, think that... Anyway, at this point, we're not changing uses, so I don't okay. have to worry about the Fine. full... <laughs> all, all I know is that agricultural uses slash farming are permitted in that district, and so we're not worried about a conditional use of any of these. We aren't, we aren't going through the whole change of use process. Mm -hmm. So if, if we were, then I'd be looking at that more closely. So all are permitted, and it would just continue. It just would be... Right. It's a, they're, a they're all balance. unchanged uses at this point. Right. Um, so, any other questions from the board? All right. I think uh, that gives you uh, something to consider. And uh, Kate, do you have another? Oh, yeah. sorry. I thought you were something to add. And uh, certainly, Meredith is happy to help work with you, but. Um, I mean, uh, overall, it seems like a fairly straightforward subdivision, and uh, we'll see you back for final subdivision review. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Folks. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Before, did you, ma'am, were you here for any? Okay. <coughs> People usually. Yeah. People usually speak up. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, let me make some business announcements because we're going to go into executive session. Uh, first of all, our next regularly scheduled meeting is for Monday, December 3rd, 2018. However, my understanding is that there are no current pending applications for that December 3rd meeting. Correct. Um, so it's kind of up to you. Do you guys want to meet to discuss something on the 3rd or not? <laughs> I mean, how how soon does someone have to submit something for? They've, to they've missed the deadline. Yeah. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't the there's no. We have to have okay. public. The notice. only reason why there would be a, a meeting on the third would be if you, as the remainder group, are deliberating yeah. um, the parking garage application. If you would seek to use that as a second night for deliberations, um, or. Um, you know, there is always the possibility for, we actually, Meredith looked into the possibility to do some training. However, because of the relatively short notice, it's not, we don't think we would be able to have anything together of substance. Now, we could come and we could chit chat. Um, I don't know if that's a good use of our time. Um, I think it's a good idea that we continue to, um, simply maybe take advantage of this. I know the rest of the board has been working hard um, and you're entitled to a break. Um, and we're going into the winter session and I suspect this will not be the only uh, Monday where we have a very light schedule um, just because it generally tends to lighten up in the winter months um, and we can, it's not our only opportunity to do additional training. Um, do we have to decide now because we're going to begin deliberation and mm -hmm. we may not really know if we yeah. need it until you know, we're we don't have to decide no, now. We, no, we you can. You and that's where I was with that too as, as well. I just I'd like to have that as a as a uh, possible option. I wouldn't want to load up December third with other activities. You know, we may not need it, but we may. Right, yeah, and so let's leave that flexibility. And I, I think we can just simply leave it there. If, however, the December third meeting is canceled, our next meeting would then become uh, Monday, December seventeenth, which would be our last regularly scheduled meeting for the DRB in two thousand eighteen. Um, so, with that, um, I want to make a note that uh, Kate and I will be accusing ourselves from uh, the deliberations that you 
all are about to move into and we'll actually leave the building um, before you begin deliberations. So um, I understand that there is a uh, need to continue to review the 100 State Street application. I'll take a motion to go into deliberative session. So moved. Motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Tom. All those in favor of going into deliberative session, please raise your right hand. All right. We are in deliberative session. Thank you very much. <laughs>